Assalamu alaikum and very good morning to all of you dear students we are learning class 9 science biology in that we are actually doing practicals but today i am going to give you the mind map of chapter number 5 yes the chapter number 5 the fundamental unit of life dear students this is the mind map the whole chapter is included into this one page now why this mind map is useful uh, helpful uh, useful to you because it is very helpful to you dear students you can easily get the clear idea about all whole of this chapter even you can easily get the idea that which topic is included into the main topic getting dear students so my request to all the students that please go through this mind map uh, for chapter number five definitely it uh, really helpful to you so today i am explaining this mind map to you that how you are going to remember all that things of chapter number five which are the main topics of the chapter number five and which are the subtopics of this particular main topic okay so we are starting with the mind map dear students first of all we are uh, name of the chapter that is the fundamental unit of life yes that you all know that is our chapter number five in our textbook so very first thing we were learning about this cell yes in this chapter we had first learn about the history of the cell that how cell was discovered and which are the different parts of the cells okay so first cell so definitely the definition of the cell should be clear to you first of all that cell it is written over here dear students you can easily observe it that a uh, cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all living organisms of course whatever the living organisms are present on the earth either they are the bacteria algae fungus plants animals all living organisms the basic structural and functional unit is what cell and all living organisms are structurally composed of cells can you getting this sentence dear students structurally composed of cells means wo cells se bane hue hain getting dear students for example one house which it is built up which is standing position the one unit is its brick in the same way the living organisms have the structural unit is what cells okay so i hope till here you people are clear that the first is cell okay now secondly you can observe over here dear student that cell af below the cell there are four different parts or you can say the four different boxes you can observe the first is multicellular organisms unicellular organisms prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells okay so first we go with the multicellular organisms okay on the basis of the number cell on the basis of the number of the cell it is divided multicellular and unicellular and this is also so many times i told you that multi means many and cellular means cells and organisms means organisms means those organisms which have multiple cells which have many number of cells into their body they are called as multicellular organisms so let's come here see what written here that many cells cells group together and assume different functions in the body to form various body parts for example plants and animals every multicellular organism has come from a single cell which divides to form many cells of its own kind yes it is perfectly true dear students and should be clear to you also that either the multicellular organism is there either for example we human we have lots of we have millions of cells into our body but the human body is actually made up with the single cell only that single cell divides further divides further divides further on the process of that division so many different cells are proceed or we can say so many different cells are present into our body so i hope the multicellular organism is clear to you dear students now the next is unicellular organism same here uni means one and cellular means cells and organisms means organisms those organisms which have only one cell a single cell into their body they are called as unicellular organisms a single cell constitutes the whole organism for example amoeba chlamydomonas and bacteria mostly all the bacteria are the unicellular organisms so please uh, dear students 
if the fill up comes or one mark question comes or uh, match the column that unicellular organism and if bacteria is written that you should be clear with that all the bacteria is having the single cell into their body so they are unicellular organisms okay now the next is now the uh, type of cell the two types of cells actually the prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cell still so many students having the doubt between what is prokaryotic and what is eukaryotic so let's clear it he here uh, dear students that in prokaryotic cell nuclear envelope envelope you are getting no dear students envelope mean, uh, means a membrane a outer membrane and outer layer and outer covering nuclear envelope and membrane bound organelles are absent in which cell in prokaryotic cell so this is the main basic uh, point between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic dear students now you can see over here that membrane bound organelles what do you mean by membrane bound organelles organelles of course a cell uh, if a cell is there cell having some of the organelles but some organelles have the membrane have the membrane means have the layer have the particular outer layer so that is called as membrane bound organelles but in prokaryotic cell the nuclear envelope we can say the nuclear membrane and membrane bound organelles both are absent for example bacteria and cyanobacteria so these are the examples of the prokaryotic cell now moving with the eukaryotic cell dear students that nucleus is well defined well defined what do you mean by well defined in prokaryotic cell nucleus is not well defined not well defined it does not mean dear student that they do not have the genetic material or we can say the chromosomes of course bacteria and all that unicellular organisms have the chromosome have the chromatin have the genetic material but the difference is they are not in a perfect shape as nuclear envelope is not there they are not in a perfect sh shape whereas in eukaryotic cell all the genetic material is combined into a nuclear envelope and that is why we can say that nucleus is well defined with the nuclear envelope and that contains dna in it for example plant and animal cell we are the animal and we have dna into our cells okay so i hope now this basic difference clear to you dear students what is prokaryotic cell and then what is eukaryotic cell okay now after eukaryotic cell you can see over here dear students two types of boxes are given to you one is plant cell and another is animal cell it means that plant and animal we are eukaryotic organisms or plant cells are eukaryotic organisms and all the animals are eukaryotic organisms okay so let's come with the plant cell what is written over here that cell wall is present of course that is the very basic thing about the plant or we can say a basic difference between the plant cell and animal cell that cell wall is present in plant cell and we can observe also while we were doing the activity of the how to observe onion cells under the microscope and we had really very clear clearly seen the cell wall of the onion okay <clears throat> so the cell shape uh, so the cell shape is well defined okay my mistake not sap it is shape okay sap is a different thing that is cytoplasm okay so the cell shape is well defined comparatively larger central space is occupied by a large vacuole and i had also discussed that what is the function of the vacuole the function of the vacuole is to store something either the storage of the food or the storage of the waste material or whatever okay plant cells lack centrosome and centrioles and nucleus lies at one side of the cell okay now you are might be uh, confused with this word centrosome and centrioles actually these are the parts of the nucleus means it is a very detailed topic about the nucleus so we are not going to discuss uh, over here about it we will discuss later it on but you should have to clear one thing or you should have to remember one thing over here that plant cell nucleus is um, always most probably it lies at the side of the cell not at the center of the cell if you go uh, through the images of the onion cell and chick cell you can clearly observe this that onion cell having the nucleus at the little bit side of the center means it is not perfectly in the center it is at the side of the cell whereas the nucleus of the chick cell is perfectly at the center okay so clearly about with the plant cell now moving with the animal cell dear students okay 
एनिमल सेल जनरली इज स्मॉलर इन साइज एनिमल सेल्स आर स्मॉलर इन साइज रेदर देन वॉट रेदर देन प्लांट सेल ओके डू नॉट हैव सेल वर्ल्ड प्रोमिनेंट एंड हाईली कॉम्प्लेक्स गोल की बॉडीज आर प्रेजेंट येस वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट गोल की बॉडीज ऑल्सो एंड यू आर क्लियर विद द फंक्शन ऑफ द गोल की बॉडी इट हेल्प एंडोप्लाज्मिक रेटिकुलम टू मेक प्रोटीन्स एनिमल सेल्स पजिस सेंट्रियोल्स एंड न्यूक्लियस लाइज इन द सेंटर एज नाउ आई टोल्ड यू दैट गो थ्रू विद इमेज ऑफ अनियन सेल एंड गो थ्रू इमेज विद द चिक सेल यू कैन क्लियरली ऑब्जर्व द लोकेशन ऑफ द न्यूक्लियस इन बोथ ऑफ द सेल ओके नाउ आफ्टर द एनिमल सेल both plant cell and animal cell you can easily see over here dear student structural organization of the cell means which are the main parts of the cell each and every cell whatever the cell is either it is a cell of bacteria it is a cell of fungus it is a cell of algae plant animal whatever the cell is each and every cell having this four parts which one plasma membrane cell wall i if it is plant uh, then cell wall only present otherwise animal cells do not have cell wall so please do not confuse over here nucleus and cytoplasm or we can say each and every cell having three main parts means teen part to hamesha hote hi hai which are they they are plasma membrane nucleus and cytoplasm and if it is plant cell then you can observe cell wall also so now let's go through it uh, plasma membrane plasma membrane it is the outermost covering of the cell that is composed of proteins and lipids this is also we had discussed that plasma membrane is made up with the phospholipids and proteins are embedded inside it okay it permits the entry and exit of some materials it maintains the shape of the cell act as mechanical barrier and protects the internal content of the cell transport of substances across the membrane takes place by diffusion and osmosis this two processes also we had discussed into our videos what is diffusion and what is osmosis here also you should have to be remember dear students that diffusion and osmosis both processes are uh, we can say in both the processes the movement of the particular uh, ions or molecules occurs from higher concentration to lower concentration but remember diffusion takes place in all of these states in solid state also liquid also and gas also whereas the osmosis occurs only in water okay so this is all about the plasma membrane the outer covering of the cell which protects the cell okay now the second is cell wall cell wall is only found in plant cell it is tough non living outer covering lining the outside of plasma membrane it permits the cells of plants fungi and bacteria to withstand much greater changes in surrounding medium than the animal cell getting dear student the function of the cell wall that why cell wall is very necessary for the plants because it permits the plants to withstand much greater ch changes in surrounding medium okay getting dear students okay now going with the nucleus it is popularly called as brain of the cell it controls all functions of a cell it determines the cell development and maturity by directing the chemical activities of cell it plays an important role in cellular reproduction in which a cell divides to form new daughter cells getting dear students as nucleus has the genetic material it allows it having the particular a uh, function or we can say mechanism to divide further to forming a new daughter cells okay now the next is cytoplasm cytoplasm is a fluid it is a liquid that contained inside the plasma membrane it also contains many specialized cell organelles it helps in exchange of material between cell organelles it is a site of certain metabolic pathways such as glycolysis glycolysis is a very important pathway dear students but uh, still as a student of class 9 you should should not be uh, go deep into the glycolysis uh we will one day surely discuss about the glycolysis so clear dear students you are here the structural organization of the cell that each and every cell having three main parts the first is plasma membrane second is nucleus and third is cytoplasm and if it is plant cell is there then cell wall is also the structure part of the structural organization okay now after the structural organization which are the cell organelles are present into the cell that we have to discuss over here that which are the cell organelles you can observe over here the first is er 
that is endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes and plastid. Okay, so let's look into this. Okay, first is ER. The uh, ER is the short form of endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is also called as highway system of the cell. It is large network of membrane bound tubules and sheets. Endoplasmic reticulum membrane is made up of lipids and proteins. Okay, and what is the function of ER? Also, we have discussed the function of RER also, that is rough endoplasmic reticulum, and SER, that is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so the next cell organelle is mitochondria. Mitochondria are known as powerhouse of the cell. It releases energy required by the cell in the form of ADP. What is ADP? That is adenosine triphosphate. Okay, that is the energy currency of the our body or energy currency of the cell. The third cell organelle is Golgi apparatus or you can also pronounce as Golgi apparatus. Actually, the correct pronounce is Golgi apparatus only. It consists of a system of a membrane bound vesicles called cisternae. It helps in formation of lysosomes and in storing the packaging of various molecules in a cell. Golgi apparatus clear to you dear students. Now the next is lysosomes. These are called as suicidal bags of a cell. They form the waste disposal system of a cell. Yes, they are the waste disposal system. For example, we have been a uh, dustbin at our homes for the waste disposal in the same way our body our cell has lysosomes to remove the waste from our cells the next is plastids this is also remember dear students plastids are only found in plant cells and plastids are of different type chromoplast chloroplast and leucoplast chromo means color that is colored plastid chloro that which having only chlorophyll pigment which having only green pigment that is chloroplast and leucoplast which is colorless plastid and that is why they are called as leucoplast then the last one is vacuoles these are storage sacs for solid and liquid contains they are small size in animal cells and large size in plant cells there is the difference that vacuoles are larger in uh, plant cells and vacuoles are smaller in size in animal cells so this is we can see a mind map of chapter number five so my request to you dear students if um, uh, write it down into your notebook with the neat and clean handwriting you can Take a screenshot of the mind map from this video and you can uh, zoom in and you can write it down and you can easily, yes, of course, you can easily write it down into your notebook.